I'm Kath McGann. This is my first performance at Oyster Mill. We just moved into the area. Before this, I was in Rumors and Five Women Wearing the Same Dress and Cosi at uh, Courtyard Theatre in Sills Grove. And before that, I was doing things with uh, the Caribbean Community Theatre on St. Croix, which is where I live in the Virgin Islands. So I'm rather new to the area, <laughs> new to the autumn temperatures. <laughs> And very excited about this production because Oyster Mill, it, it's just, it seems like such a wonderful place to, to perform and, and the rest of the cast is terrific and I can't wait to see how we all come together on opening night and put this thing together. We're coming together already. It's, it's a really good cast. Uh, my name is Bob Davis. I play Detective Sergeant Fred Burchett in an act of the imagination. Um, Cass McGann here, she's, well, by way of being my wife. <laughs> Though she won't admit it, she's on camera I won't now. even take his last name. <laughs> um, so but basically, uh, with her, our, our stories are the same where we were. Um, I had the good fortune of playing um, Bob Wallace in White Christmas last season, last Christmas season at Courtyard Theater in Sealands Grove. I um, had the dubious pleasure of directing Cass in Five Women Wearing the Same Dress. Never <laughs> direct your wife. Oh my, was that ever fun. <laughs> and I've uh, been in a bunch of stuff. I was also in Rumors with her and uh, had a lot of fun with Caribbean Community Theater in St. Croix. Yep. And you did, were in the pit band for Dream Girl. Yeah, did some mu did some musical work down there, which was a lot of fun. Um, because the, but I'm really excited to be working at Oyster Mill because it's a great edifice. It's a great bunch of people. Um, cast and crew have been completely fantastic in this, and I'm really amped. This it, it, at this point where we're recording this, we're what two weeks ish? Not even less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. So call it ten days before we go up. I have never been involved in my entire life with a production that is this pulled together at this point. I mean, we could go up tomorrow. Don't say that. Someone will die. I don't believe in all that. <laughs> Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> we, seriously, we, we have a great... No, I have to go run around the... Yeah, run around the theater three, three times. times <laughs> no, I'm going to stick lightning sound effects there, by the way. <laughs> you, you probably should. No, I, I don't believe in any of that stuff. It, I, we, we are really, really well pulled together. We are really well pulled together. You I should come see it. Really excited to and be in it. And Sergeant Burchett, and then you can mark every time he screws up. <laughs> I'm not a real policeman. <laughs> Um, but he does funny voices. It, and it, but it's it's a great going to be a great deal of fun. Um, it's it's a really interesting mystery too. No spoilers. But <laughs> it, it's a really interesting mystery. The ending will uh, will uh, be shock really, you. It will shock you. It will excite you. No, not really. But it'll be a lot of fun to watch. That's for sure. So, looking forward to it. And if it isn't, he'll do a tap dance. I promise. <laughs> Okay. I, I love that we're five minutes in and I only asked one question. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the right couple. We can blither for we'll our just, country. We, we both used to work in radio, so we could fill dead air like Seriously. nobody's business. Well, well done. Yeah. <laughs> done <that. laughs> Don't give us any space. We will fill all the space that there is to fill. The room will get small. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Well, then, um, <clears throat> let's try and check off all the questions we already addressed there. Uh, what's what's uh, something about uh, you both that nobody knows? But I'm but waiting. I, you're waiting. I'm waiting. I, I think everybody knows. I'm an open book. I'm a book that is open. <laughs> yeah. With words in. Yeah, with words I'm in. Just, there's got to be something about you. I don't know. No. I, I. Everybody knows about languages. Everybody knows about costumes. Every. What doesn't? What don't people know about me? My hair is naturally curly. That you're allergic to cats. I'm allergic to cats. I am actually allergic to cats, and all my friends have cats. And when I go to visit them, they have to put things over the pillows on the bed so that. The you cats. don't break out. In I don't hives. break out in hives. <laughs> oh, she gets spotty. I get. So I do. Funny. I get like a pimply teenager, <laughs> because the cats, the cat, and and cats know that I'm allergic to them, so they always sleep on my pillow, even if they've never <laughs> slept on pillows before. They seek out my pillow and sleep on it, and we have so we have this adversarial relationship, me and cats. I love them. They're beautiful animals as long as they stay over there. <laughs> Something about me that nobody knows. Yeah. Right? No pressure. <laughs> I have to think. Gosh, 
Because I'm pretty much an open book as well. I don't know. I'll be brutally honest. How about that? Confessional time. Uh-oh. I talk a lot. But I talk a lot because I, I'm, I'm afraid that I don't really have anything of substance to say ever. <laughs> If you know what I mean, like I, I try to, I try to say things that are important and weighty and thoughtful, or at least funny, but really I just blather to fill the space because I'm afraid that if I don't, then people are going to go, well, he's a real jerk, Boy. and walk away. Yeah. Aww, Confession. look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're having a real breakthrough here. <laughs> All right, so let's go with that. <laughs> you did this at home. Yeah. Yeah. And here's your check for $150. <laughs> well done, well done. Okay, well then, let's let's do this here. I've already tortured everybody else with this. Um, oh. Torture? Yes. Like, the so, thing that nobody knows about you wasn't bad enough. I'm like, shit, everybody knows everything. Oh, it, it gets worse. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I would like to know something that you love something that you loathe, and something that you've recently learned that you want to share with us. Shall I go first? Go first, I'll, so I can catch up. Something that I love is beer. <laughs> I used to make beer for a living. In church? No, church. no, no, no church. that's Lehigh Valley Homebrew. Oh, Lehigh Valley Homebrew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always wearing a beer t-shirt. But no, I, I, I started brewing professionally a while ago, and I don't do it anymore because I'm, you know, 43 and it's young man's work. Um, so yeah, I, I really love beer from one end of the spectrum to the other. It's interesting, fascinating, and something that is translating into that. Something that I loathe. Is your wife pointing out that you have a beer belly? <laughs> I mean, besides that. Um, we have not been drinking. Yet. This is just normal. Something that I loathe. You want the whole list or just the top ten? Oh, just right right off the top. I, I, I only have 30 minutes on this camera. Oh, okay. People, who <laughs> People who tie their shoes. Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. You love Jerry Seinfeld? I, can't, I never could like that show. I tried really hard. Every, all my friends were just, oh, Seinfeld, Seinfeld, Seinfeld. God, it annoyed the crap out of me. I like hmm. Julia Louis-Dreyfus's hair. She, yeah, she, was pretty, she was the only funny thing about that show. She so yeah, lo loathe sign love beer, loathe Seinfeld. Just recently learned is that you can really fool a lot of people by photoshopping Jawas on photographs from the Mars lander. They have these. The NASA came out like yesterday with all these huge, huge high res images. So I pulled one off from Facebook and found some pictures of Jawas from Star Wars and Facebooked them in all the little and, and photoshopped them in all the little nooks and crannies of the rocks on Mars and then posted it to Facebook. What can you see that shouldn't be <laughs> What? That's insane. I have too much free time. Is it my turn now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love vintage clothing. I'm not wearing any at the moment. <laughs> But I adore vintage clothing. Matter of fact, my profession is I lecture about the history of clothes, history of costume, uh, from the Middle Ages through 1947. So I do what I love. Hmm. I loathe when I see a production that is costumed badly, particularly if it's a historical production. I was watching last night this thing called The Great Fire, and it's my one of my favorite favorite time periods for clothing is is restoration 1660s 1660s england and charles ii's court these people they were wearing the drapes i mean it was the drapes somebody went and got drapes and put them on these people oh like it's grandma like, grandma's <gasps> couch oh not couch drapes it was awful oh it was, really yeah yucky gold fakey gold and, and and so you hate that oh my god i hated it and hated it Mm. Loathed, he said. Loathed. loathed. I yes, loathed. loathed it. With a visceral and, passion. Yeah, and they then they had <laughs> the and they had dresses that laced up the back, which and I just I had to stop watching it. I had to stop watching it. I love the time period. I really want to see how they were going to handle this. They handled. They, it was a retelling of the Great Fire from the point of view we're of talking where. Talking about our play now. Just so you know. He asked me what about what I loathe. You and loathe I don't, bad costume. I don't loathe our play. Well, no, you don't vote, but I'm well, saying... that's good to know. Yeah. I'm saying that don't tell people about the production on television that you were watching. 
focus. He asked me what I love. Focusing. I loathe my husband. <laughs> and what did you learn? What have you learned okay. recently? <laughs> well, actually, before you get to that, then here I just want you to tell me about this. Uh oh. This was from a 2003 production of Canterbury Tales that we had here. Well, you see, you see, one cannot look at stage costume and expect it to be historical. Because it has to be good for the stage. And if you were really dressed like people who were going to Canterbury in the 14th century, you wouldn't look this good. You know? It's very flashy, but it's for the stage. Mm -hmm. And that's expected. Mm -hmm. When you're doing a movie about the Great Fire, it doesn't have to be flashy. It has, it should be, it should be. It, you the, do, cam it, the camera will pick up every last. It's step. a historical event and everybody who's in the, the movie existed. A lot more dirt and shit, basically, is what you're oh, saying. Oh, no, not a lot more dirt and shit. They, well, it, there, there should have been more dirt and shit. There really should have. <laughs> but the fact that the, the stuff that the king's wearing looked cheap because it looked like it was made out of polyester curtains rather than good silks. Hmm. And, you know, I mean, Charles Dance was in this. It wasn't a small-time production. <laughs> the BBC did it. The BBC has better costume department than that. I've seen it. So, okay. you know, not bad for, for theatrical costumes. Everyone that, is properly wimpled. Yeah. That's that's the, that, that's the thing that I was going to mention. They have, everyone they have, has they have something, something on their head. On. Yes, and they have, they have things on their head. Which is very rare yes. in medieval productions. But also, theatrical costuming, different thing. You'll notice that I don't do costumes. <laughs> 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 I'm a historical clothier. It's true. Um, it's true. But I still have a thing. I don't, I don't know what I just learned. I've just learned something. Oh, I know what I learned. I learned some Welsh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> My character in this Spoilers. performance, it's not a spoiler, but she's Welsh. <laughs> in the program, you'll see Brenda Simmons, a Welsh woman. That's me. <laughs> and I actually, I actually taught myself some Welsh so that I could do the actual Welsh bits and wouldn't sound ridiculous. Okay. Can you favor us with a, uh, with a line? Yeah, sure. Um. Ni with the blewno esplanadoid which means, but I haven't been there for years. All right. It just trips <laughs> off the tongue. Very well done. <laughs> Welsh people will be writing you letters and going, her accent is really awful. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm out on the moors now. Do you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> do you? Well done. Chasing the sheep. Chasing sheep. <laughs> you do. Oh, my, my, my. Okay, well. well I used to swear in Welsh as well, so. Oh, okay. I had to learn Welsh swear words. Don't, don't do that on camera. No, no, no they're, but I, I didn't learn real Welsh swear, swear words because I keep having a horror that there's going to be a Welsh grandmother in the audience and that she'll come backstage and, like, smack me. So I, I, I sound like I'm swearing, but really I'm saying idiot. I say idiot three different ways. Mm. I yell Englishman and garbage. But they're truly, <laughs> truly clean words. So on how you yes. deliver it. Yeah. yeah well, well if, if you're Welsh, you know, calling someone an Englishman may very well be oh, an yeah, insult. Oh, yeah, it is. It is meant to be an insult. It's, yeah, it's, it's definitely one the other way around. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I go out the door screaming, Spurio! And it just means rubbish. But it has, it has a lot of... You could really stretch it out. It's a good one. It's a good one to scream when going out the door. I like it. Okay. Um, any uh, fun anecdotes about uh, the show to this point? Fun anecdotes. The time you did the whole scene with your trousers off? No, no, <laughs> haven't done that yet. <laughs> yet. No, there was there was a time. There was a time. We, there at one point, Sergeant Burchett has to hand. There is a gun. I'll spoiler. I'll spoiler alert that much. There is a gun involved. A gun and a mystery. In in the murder, what got done? And Sergeant Burchett has to handle the gun to demonstrate a thing. <laughs> So I, I picked the thing up. Now, I was in the Army for a while, uh, quite a while. I've been around guns virtually my entire life, but I pick up this stupid prop gun, and the thing basically explodes. <laughs> I hit one thing wrong, and it just dropped to pieces, and I'm left standing there looking like a complete burk. And, and everybody's Stage laughing. manager is yelling at him, yeah. Your prop are gone! That's my prop! <laughs> And I'm just, oops. That, yeah, that, so yeah, it doesn't really involve anybody but me being a complete jerk. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. That's the only anecdote I can I think I can give without too much spoiler. Yeah. I don't think I have any. I think all my anecdotes are spoilers. Yeah. Shame. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're actually at about 12 minutes into this now. Oh, nice. <laughs> Is that so longer than everyone else? Into the five-minute interview. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really impressed. <laughs> <laughs> this is normally, normally I feel like I have people bound and I'm like, you know, whipping them in their feet to get them to talk, no, you, you know? have to turn us off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Our friends call it the Bob and Cash show. Yeah. ta -da! We have our own logo. <laughs> and it will appear right above our head. Uh, yes, <laughs> <Magically>. yes. <laughs> Boy, do I have a thumbnail in mind all of a sudden. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> why, then, should the good people of central Pennsylvania come to see an act of the imagination at Oyster Mill Playhouse? Because the story. The, the story, I mean, it, and any good production has to have good story. You can have great characters, but without a good story for the, in, for the characters to exist in, it's, it's pointless. So this has a really good story and good characters. So, it, like I said earlier, without giving too much spoiler, the uh, it, it's going to be a surprise what happens at the end. There's, there's surprises pretty much all the way through it. It's but, surprising. But it's it's going to be it's it's going to be a great great two act play. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, certainly better than. Come for the accents. The accents are phenomenal. Oh yeah, yeah. If you know Bunch people in this play. If you know people in this place, come to watch to listen to them do English accents of various types. English, watch your tongue, English. And Welsh. British accents. <laughs> accents from the United Kingdom. No, it's going to be a great deal of fun. Come. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a good one. We're putting our hearts and souls into it. Don't let us down! What? Don't let us down. We're going to play to an empty house. Cut.